Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. $2.8 million of Silver Eagles have been seized, and more are now missing as the mystery deepens in a fraud case. Let's explore! <laughs> You may remember I did a story on this ways back where hundreds of monster boxes of silver eagles were found in a garage of a home in Norway because a very strange fraud case that had occurred involving a pastor known as the Silver Schemer. We're going to take a look at a pair of stories here from Kiloland.com. And I saw this information was going to do a story on it. And then I saw Dr. Who uh, emailed me about it as well. Um, but as they told us, first, a so-called pastor from Pennsylvania will spend now 25 years behind bars for scamming millions of dollars using fake humanitarian projects as bait for investors. And some victims are in South Dakota, and this is where this story is based out of. Nathan Peachy's co-defendant in the case, John Winder of New Mexico, skipped his sentencing at the federal courthouse in Sioux Falls and is on the run from the law. Uh, but he's not the only one evading authorities. And this mystery deepens for sure. In a rare interview, the FBI agent whose investigation took him all the way to Norway sat down with us to talk about the shocking case. Uh, Norwegian real estate is expensive. And after Nathan Peachy and another American, Lauren Rossier purchased this home on a fjord in Norway for more than a million dollars, and they spent another couple of million dollars on investors' money to lavishly remodel it. And here we can see the home there. It looks relatively modest from this angle, but nonetheless, it's pretty expensive real estate there. Um, they claim during the trial that uh, was the headquarters for their humanitarian efforts but to our eye, it looked kind of like a more luxury mansion, FBI agent Matt Miller said. And here's where the mystery becomes really interesting as far as what their, um, what their plans were. According to authorities, Peachy and his cohorts planned to buy up more homes in the area and create a sovereign state, their own country. Can you imagine? In court, it was revealed that Peachy didn't file federal income taxes. Meanwhile, his co-defendant, John Weiner, wrote a letter saying that the court had no jurisdiction over him and was a no-show for his sentencing. I'd say very often there is a narcissistic or sociopathic element to these defendants because you have to take it and not think about the consequences of the people you're taking it from. Even though you know it's their retirement money, you know it's money for their kid's college, and you have to just disregard that knowing they're never going to get that money back. And that is a shame. You really do have to be a sociopath to have that kind of um, uh, mentality. When Miller and Norwegian authorities arrived to search the mansion, they uncovered millions of silver coins purchased with investors' money stashed away in these boxes. And those are actually monster boxes. And you can see the little images here showing what they look like stored in that garage. I mean, we're talking hundreds of these boxes filled with 500 silver eagles each in the box. <clears throat> there were just stacks of them, and when you open them, they sort of shined and gleamed. In fact, in the trial, we had one of the agents show the jury what these silver coins looked like, and they were amazed, Miller said. Well, if they want to be amazed, they should come over to the stacking community, the silver stacking community here on YouTube. They can see a lot more silver coins obtained legally. Now, those silver coins have been seized and proceeds from many assets the U.S. government can obtain out of Norway will go to nearly two dozen victims, such as Alex Knox of Arizona. Whether we see 10 cents in the dollar or what we've seized in properties and vehicles and silver and other items these people have bought, but I'm not the only victim. I can't just count on, oh, I want all my money back and made it in whole, Knox said. Knox is one of the many victims deceived by a trusted financial planner who preyed 
on their Christian values to get them to invest a large amount of money on fake humanitarian projects. Kilo Land investigates will have Knox's story, plus hear from the Norwegian journalists who traveled to South Dakota in a further expose called Silver Coin Schemers. And this is a, another article that goes in a little bit more detail about this because there's, it gets even more interesting. This mansion in Norway, millions of dollars in silver coins and a sales pitch appealing to Christian values which resulted in a string of victims across the country. Sounds like a plot of a Hollywood movie. But the real-life $13 million international fraud ring, which nabbed victims in South Dakota, is one of the most intriguing cases to ever unfold in the federal courthouse in Sioux Falls. This week, a self-proclaimed pastor from Pennsylvania got 25 years in prison after being found guilty of money laundering and wire fraud charges. But there's so much more to this story as they investigate this series called the Silver Coin or Mysteries with their expose silver coin schemers. Criminal mastermind Nathan Peachy and members of his family entered the federal courthouse in Sioux Falls for Peachy's sentences. Sentence as he proclaimed, Thus saith the Lord God, May the curse return to those that put it on me. And there he is. There, all right. Little Peachy, not a very Peachy time he's having now in prison. It was Peachy and his fellow scammers' use of religion and playing on their victims' desires to give back and do good that helped them carry out the scheme. I want a return on my investment, but how else can I do that? How else can I give back to the community it's a win-win if you can do something like that that's how it was pitched to us alex knox said alex knox of arizona and his trusted uh, and financial advisor brad tennyson when tennyson pitched him the idea of investing 1.3 million dollars from the sale of knox's family far into farm into a humanitarian project that could pay high returns here's our trusted friend who's done right by us for a long time and offering us a return here with our money that is 100% safe and secure, Knox said. Tennyson told him the money would go into a company that would convert shipping containers into homes. The idea was that this company would make residential and small commercial units and put them down into the islands, whether it's Haiti or the Dominican Republic or any place down there. Let's invest in a company that can give back to society and help those people, Knox said. And here are the two, but apparently, you know, Brad didn't do his research on this company, apparently. But Tennyson uh, uh, brought in several other investors from uh, Arizona and Colorado. And with the money ultimately going to these men, Nathan Peachy, John Weiner, and Lauren Rossier, and Frederick Aris, who claims to run an international Christian charity. Other authorities say their activities were anything but charitable. Once a bad guy, a con man, achieves his trust, the sky is sort of the limit, which is another horrendous thing about these crimes. It's not someone forcing them onto you. It's bringing them into your life and making them trust you, FBI agent Matt Miller said. Of course, where he was led wrong is going through this through an investor. If you want to do something like this, you get involved in a church. And you look and you uh, look at the finances of that church and get involved and stay there for a while. And maybe do it through your church. Most churches that are kind of worth the salt will have ministries and programs that you can help out there and be able to do things like this. Or if they don't and you have an idea, more likely you can have it done through the church if you have the money to make it happen. Nonetheless, in a court, the prosecutor described Peachy as a shining and disturbing example of narcissism and said that he was not righteous or Christian like in any sense of the word. Mr. Peachy is a salesman at the end of the day. He had to convince these people, hey, give me your money, even at the time he knew he was going to run with it. What was interesting in this case is the way they looked at these smaller, unsophisticated investors, if you will, and victims to get you the crazy amounts of money that they got. And then it got complicated after that, according to special agent in charge, Tyre Hatcher. Complicated may be an understatement. It took several fraud agencies and the help of Norwegian authorities to unwind it all. And those efforts are still ongoing. Peachy led them to Norway, where he conspired with a Louisiana man to dream up unusual ways to hide the money. We really tried to find out uh, why did this scam end up in Norway. We're not to the bottom of that yet. 
We've not really solved it. I think it's a bizarre story, Eskel Endgel of the Norwegian Business Daily. The story brought Norwegian journalist Eskel Endegal and Johannes Berg all the way to Sioux Falls to cover the case. One of the defendants, Lauren Rossier, who called himself the general, died in November of cancer. And uh, there's his grave in Norway. He was an American from Louisiana. He was in Norway living for probably 10 years, and suddenly he and Peachy brought this huge mansion, bought this huge mansion in Oslo, luxury mansion. Rossier was living there, running the scam together with Peachy. In the course of the investigation, FBI agent Matt Miller went to Norway to go through the mansion that the man claimed was the headquarters of their humanitarian efforts. The house was an extraordinary building up on a hill overlooking a fjord in Norway, almost that you would imagine, and it had been redone, and there was a large office, marble countertops, and widely expensive jacuzzi, bathtubs, and it was a very ornate place. They imported marble from the U.S., the best kitchen money could buy, and then suddenly silver coins for $2.7 million appeared in the house. They just stored it in the garage, Engall said. Two tons of silver coins valued at nearly $3 million, to be exact. This was the way of hiding the money in a way because it couldn't be kept in banks any longer, Miller said. There is the lesson here, folks. Uh, you have your money in silver um, and coins. Of course, you know it would be much easier, I think, to hide it in form of gold than silver. But maybe, I don't know, you would think that this amount of purchases, all these unsealed monster boxes, um, where would you have gotten that? That should have probably have raised the suspicions there how they were purchased. But that's probably another story, maybe something they will um, investigate to some degree. Um, were, they, were they all the same date? I imagine they probably were. All the monster boxes probably were the same date. Authorities were able to seize another shipment of coins in the U.S. before being shipped out to Norway. However, more silver coins are missing. So the ones that were not, those are hundreds of monster boxes of silver eagles in Norway, and others were seized in the U.S. Were they monster boxes of eagles? Um, and Gull says, so there are two tons of silver coins missing. Kaneke asked, two tons? And Gadal says, yeah, $1 million is missing. And Peachy and the general said that there was a break-in in the house and someone stole it. Interesting. My guess is probably not. That's probably uh, their excuse, which is probably um, more legitimate than a boating accident. But nonetheless, very, very interesting indeed. The mystery continues, and so we'll continue to try and locate that. Perhaps we'll get back to Norway and try to find it again. Uh, that continues to be something we'll continue to pursue. Engdahl believes the silver coins are somewhere in Oslo. In the meantime, that's not the only thing, or one rather, who is missing. John Weiner of New Mexico, uh, found guilty along with Peachy, failed to show up for his sentencing in Sioux Falls in federal court. There's now a warrant out for his arrest. And this man, Frederick Arias, a former law enforcement officer who worked on financial fraud cases, is now on the FBI's most wanted list. So there you go. Interesting. He was last seen entering Canada sometime before the pandemic. We're pursuing him. He's a background law enforcement officer, undercover police officer. He speaks four languages, so he'll be difficult to find, especially if he knows the law, especially this kind of law. He knows how to hide from it. But very interesting indeed um, to see how this thing has played out. But uh, what an amazing, what an extremely unfortunate story, but well thought out. Uh, so the money is significantly impacted. They leave us destitute with some other people that were investors that they stole from, says Knox. Meanwhile, authorities say they've seized the coins in the house in a Mercedes Benz from which the proceeds will go to nearly two dozen victims. They're working with Norwegian authorities to use proceeds from the sale of the multi-million dollar mansion to reimburse the victims as well. But the international aspect of this case makes it a little more complicated, indeed. <clears throat> and uh, the man known as the general died. His wife, a Latvian woman named Lubo uh, Lubovo of Burkut, has been charged with a conspiracy to launder money in the case. She is currently being held in Norway, awaiting extradition to face the charges in Sioux Falls. And uh, there you go. So, very interesting indeed. And what a story this is. Uh, we'll see how it all plays out. 
uh, nonetheless, it is something we'll continue to uh, keep track of here and find out what um, happens from here on out. But apparently it's good that there's at least a conviction here. And uh, what was going to happen if they would have gotten away with it? An independent state, a new sovereign territory. Will it be the next, um, you know, chop zone? Uh, you know, my guess is they try to be a little more sophisticated than that. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Thanks again to Doctor Who. And I want to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.